The top 10 vehicles with the greatest price increases have price changes from 1.4 to 2.1 times the average vehicle's price increase and are primarily small, relatively affordable cars, and alternative fuel vehicles, this according to iccars.com. Quote, small cars have become the only affordable used car option for a growing segment of the population, and their price increases reflect the high demand these otherwise low-demand vehicles have experienced in recent years. End quote. The vehicle with the largest price increase is the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid, which had a price increase of 63.9% over March 2021. It is joined by an additional hybrid vehicle, the Toyota Prius, which saw a 45.2% price increase. Quote, hybrid vehicles are in high demand due to soaring gas prices, with the hybrid category as a whole increasing in price by 40.5%. Affordable transportation has seen a surge in demand in the wake of the heightened used car prices, and these hybrid cars are less expensive than the average used car. End quote. The five small gasoline cars make the list, including the Kia Rio subcompact car, the Chevrolet Spark subcompact car, the Kia Forte, the Kia Soul, which is a subcompact wagon, and the Mitsubishi Mirage. Quote, the Kia Rio, Spark, Mirage are all among the lowest cost vehicles on the market, while the Kia Forte and Soul are among the lowest priced options in their respective vehicle class. These vehicles priced at $20,000 and below are attainable for new drivers and those looking for affordable transportation even after their large increase in price over the past year, end quote. Two electric cars make the list, the Nissan Leaf and the Tesla Model S, quote, the Nissan Leaf's price increase is likely due to the surge in gas prices as well as a heightened desirability for the redesigned 2018 model, which benefited from increased range and is now coming off lease to enter the used car market. Meanwhile, demand for the used car version of the Model S waned in recent months as consumers embraced the more affordable Model 3, which of course I have, and the Model X SUV. But with the recent upgrades of the Model S plus the new Plaid model and higher fuel prices, demand has increased for the Model S. End quote. The Mercedes-Benz G-Class rounds out the list. Quote, the wait time for a new version of the Mercedes-Benz G-Class is over a year, so buyers who want this opulent off-roader are turning to the used car market, end quote. Here's some more helpful information, I hope. iccars.com further analyzed used car prices by looking at the price increases in March of 2022 compared to March of 2021 by body style and fuel type, and here's the results. The three body types that have the largest price increases are hatchbacks, wagons, and sedans, respectively, quote, Hatchbacks, wagons, and sedans have the lowest average prices among all body types, which further illustrates the heightened demand for affordable transportation. Additionally, coupes and trucks were the first segments to see big price increases more than a year ago, so their increase over the past 12 months is smaller relative to other body types. Hybrid and electric vehicles had used car price increases well above the average for all fuel types. Quote, the rapid increase in gas prices over the past few months has led to a surge in demand for hybrid and electric vehicles, end quote. And finally, on a positive note, the top 10 used cars with the smallest price changes. These top 10 vehicles have increases between 1.8 and 3.4 times less than the average vehicle and are mainly luxury and sports cars. The list includes four luxury crossover SUVs, including the first-ranked Maserati Levante, the fourth-ranked Jaguar F-Pace, the fifth-ranked Land Rover Discovery, and the sixth-ranked Porsche Macan. Quote, these luxury SUVs are among the most expensive vehicles in their class, which could explain why their price increases are lower than the competitive models. Now, three pickup trucks also make this list, including the second-ranked Nissan Titan XD, the seventh-ranked Honda Ridgeline, and the eighth-ranked Nissan Titan. Quote, the Nissan Titan and its XD Heavy Duty-ish model are the slowest selling trucks in the full-size segment, and the Ridgeline is among the slowest selling in the compact segment, reflecting low demand in the used car marketplace. Now, three sports cars round out the list, including the Camaro, MX-5, Miata RF, and the Ford Mustang. Quote, Sports cars were among the vehicle segments that saw the earliest price increases during the pandemic, so their year-over-year -year price increases aren't as dramatic as other vehicle segments because prices were already high in March of 2021. You can read this full study by clicking the link below this video. What is wrong with the Honda Accord? Sales in the U.S. have plummeted over the last seven to eight years. It peaked in 2014, 388,000 Honda Accords were sold in the U.S. Since then, it has dropped to 
355, 345, 322, 291, 267, 199,000 in 2020. It bounced back by 3,000 more cars sold in 2021. Why aren't more Americans buying Honda Accords like they used to? This modern midsize sedan is a joy to drive. It's got plenty of passenger and cargo space, very fuel efficient, especially with the available hybrid, but some people will complain it lacks all wheel drive. Maybe that's why consumers are turning to other vehicles or maybe SUVs. It has a finicky push button gear selector, maybe that's it. It has a beginning MSRP right around $27,000, $28,000. In soccer terms, it scores a hat trick. Not just a comfortable family hauler, it's also highly entertaining behind the wheel in my opinion. It has elegant style inside and out and deserves a place on the list of anyone's shopping list for a mid-size sedan. Rivals include the Mazda 6, Toyota Camry, which normally is the go-to versus the Honda Accord. There's also the Kia K5 and Hyundai Sonata offering strong competition. The 2022 model had no significant changes and there were some minor refreshing done last year. So it's basically the same vehicle it has been for the last couple of years. And maybe that is why the numbers have been fairly flat since 2020. And there are no major changes expected for 2023. So maybe these numbers will continue to fall. This is all very surprising to me because there are plenty of options to choose from in terms of trim levels and engines. You've got the LX, Sport, Sport SE, EXL, Sport 2.0 Turbo, Touring trim levels. There's also a hybrid which comes in the base, Sport EXL and Touring form as well. The Sport's pretty popular, but the SE is probably the best value. It has a standard 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, good for 192 horses, 192 pound-feet of torque, paired with a CVT, which is always a sticking point for a lot of people out there. Output for this engine is considered adequate, and the CVT is better than most, but the larger 2 liter turbo with 252 horses and 273 pound-feet of torque is worthy of consideration for performance-minded drivers, and maybe that's you. And the 10-speed automatic transmission makes the most of the turbo's engine's substantial power. On the other hand, the hybrid is rated at 212 horses, 232 pound-feet of torque, figures that top the output of the competing Camry hybrid and Sonata hybrid, so that's something to consider. But the argument is the Accord remains exclusively front-wheel drive, even as its rivals, the Legacy from Subaru, the Altima from Nissan, Camry, and Kia K5 all offer all-wheel drive for additional traction in cold weather climates. Considering how roomy the trunk is at 16.7 cubic feet of volume, roomiest in its class, you'd think that it'd be a better seller. The fast sloping roof line means the rear seat passengers must duck their heads while getting in, but once inside, you've got a lot of leg room and knee room as well as head clearance once you're inside. In the front cabin, you've got a broad but low dashboard. Small storage spaces are all over the place and everyone's phone can be charged now that Honda includes two front and rear USB ports. And if you went with the EX, EXL, Sport 2.0 Turbo, and Touring trim levels, you get wireless charging. One thing that may stand out to potential shoppers like yourself is no real shifter. Instead, you've got buttons and switches rather than a simple gear lever. All 2022 cores do come with an 8-inch central touchscreen that supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which seems like everyone does these days, but navigation and a Wi-Fi hotspot are exclusive only to the Touring. Whereas some recent Honda infotainment systems have not been so user-friendly, the Accord system is simple. Its physical buttons flank the screen to take you directly to the main functions. Large knobs for volume and tuning are also very welcome. The only thing missing is a split-screen capability for the home screen. Honda is known for safety. It has an overall five-star rating from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety hasn't tested the 2022. However, it did name the 2021 model a top safety pick plus its highest rating. So since there are no major changes for 2022, you can assume the same. Over the last 10 years, Honda Accord sales in Canada peaked at 17,000 in 2013 and then remained pretty flat between 2015 and 2018 at around 13,000 cars and change and then went down to 11,000, 7,000 and last year 6,400 cars in Canada. So numbers there are also on the decline. 
When I examine numbers of Camrys sold in the U.S., looks like 2007 was one of the best years over the last 10 years of 472,000. It stayed around the 400 to 300,000 car mark per year and then kind of had a nice little bounce back last year with 313,000 compared to the 294,000 in 2020. So Camry is actually on the rise despite a few ups and downs over the last five years. A similar trend in Canada for the Camry, where they had a good year in 2013, 18,245 cars. Then it dropped down to 15, 14, and 13,000 in 2019. Then they had a drop again in 2020, like a lot of people did with the pandemic really in full effect. Nice little bounce back in 2021 in Canada for Camry at around 12,000 cars sold. As we wrap this up, I guess a brief history lesson to put all this in perspective. The Accord came out in 1976. The Camry came out six years later. Of course, the Honda Accord has sold more because of the, the head start, but both are solid, reliable sedans. They had that major redesign or full redesign in 2018, both of them. They offer stellar safety ratings and fuel economy. At one point, both have reigned as the best-selling models in their respective brands, even though sedan sales are lagging in general as crossovers and SUVs become more and more popular. I know Camry continues to be one of the top, if not the most popular Toyota among its lineup. And even though CRV is more popular than the Accord, it's still a very viable and uh, worthwhile product for Honda. It's really hard to put a finger on why the Accord sales have dropped, although Many of the manufacturers and brands have seen a drop since the pandemic hit and with the chip shortage and such, uh, things will continue to be stagnant or maybe even uh, dropping more so in the coming years. Who knows? It's all up in the air. Ultimately, whatever you choose, whether it's a Cord or Camry, both are solid vehicles and I'm sure you'll be happy with your choice no matter which one you choose. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on this topic. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks for watching. Adios. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.